Nine players went before Patrick Mahomes in the 2017 NFL Draft. Today, we're going to find out why that is, and not only are we going to go over how those players have turned out since, but I also want to figure out who the other quarterbacks drafted in this class were and how they compared to Mahomes at the end of the day. Let's start out with the number one pick, though. Coming into the 2017 Draft, the Browns certainly could have taken a quarterback because the ones on the roster were let's just say not very good cody kessler josh mccown we had rg3 who was banged up from his time in washington kevin hogan and charlie whitehurst to be fair the browns needed a ton of help not only on offense but also defense since they allowed the third most amount of points in the league in 2016. they decided to take miles garrett at number one who's a defensive end and this is a pick that you can't complain about at all considering that he's been a pro bowler for the last four seasons and a huge part in them actually turning things around for that franchise. Pick number two, the Chicago Bears were up and they would make a little bit more of a uh, questionable decision with this pick. Coming into the draft, the Bears were battling it out with the Browns for one of the worst records in the league at three and 13. At this point in time, Jay Cutler was the starter for the beginning of the year and he was far from the player he once was for them. The other quarterbacks on the roster were Matt Barkley and Brian Hoyer not necessarily starter material guys that you want to build a team around. So the Bears did go for a quarterback here and they took Mitch Trubisky. Oh, what could have been for the Bears if they just went with Mahomes instead. To give them a bit of slack here though, most analysts had Trubisky going over Mahomes in mock drafts. At the time, scouts thought that Mitch looked like an accurate quarterback with great footwork and the ability to process defenses not only quickly, but also correctly. Unfortunately, that dream of having a franchise quarterback would not last long for Bears fans, though. They had a good season in 2018, finishing the year 12-4, but in typical Bears fashion, lost in the wildcard game to the Eagles after the Cody Parkey double doinker incident. There was also a lot of talk about how him and Matt Nagy never truly got along and their relationship was always strained, with Trubisky at the end of the day feeling unwanted in Chicago. This led to him looking elsewhere and signing with the Bills in 2021. Now, he of course wouldn't get a chance to start here because you're not going to bench Josh Allen for Mitch Trubisky. So after that season ended, he ended up in Pittsburgh. And so far, that has not turned out too great either. The Steelers have just been, I don't know, just a mediocre team coasting to a positive record throughout the last two seasons and not making it much further. He's also swapping in and out of that starting role with Kenny Pickett, even though neither of them have shown they have what it takes to win consistently. Pick number three here, the 49ers took Solomon Thomas, who is a defensive end. They weren't in the market for a quarterback around this time because they were hoping Jimmy G would be the starter for them. Unfortunately, he couldn't stop getting hurt, which became a big problem for them at the end of the day. But back to Solomon Thomas. He had a decent rookie season, but overall struggled in San Francisco. And after his rookie season, his sister ended up committing suicide, which I'm sure wore down his mental health quite a bit and made it very difficult to focus primarily on football. After his time in San Fran came to an end, he moved on to the Raiders and now plays for the Jets who had one of the best defenses, if not the best defense, this season. If they could just figure out that offensive situation, they might be able to make a playoff run next year. Number four, we have Lenny, Leonard Fournette, taken by the Jaguars. If you watch football regularly, does it not seem like Fournette was drafted like 10 years ago? I swear you could have fooled me and said he was like 32 years old and I would totally believe you, but nope. He's only 29. The Jaguars were content sticking with Blake Bortles at the quarterback position, and it looked like it was going to pay off in 2017 because they made it all the way to the AFC title game or losing to the Patriots. Let's be real here, though, and say it was like 95% because of their defense that they made it that far. I mean, they had prime Jalen Ramsey, Calais Campbell was on the team, AJ Boye, and Gakwe, and Telvin Smith, all of which made the Pro Bowl that season. After that season, though, they fell off pretty hard. It was basically a one-hit wonder season for Bortles and the Jags. Lenny rushed for 1,000-plus yards two out of the three seasons with the Jaguars before moving on to the Bucks, being a great pass-catching running back in compliment to Tom Brady and getting his Super Bowl ring in the process. And now this past season, he was the backup backup, I believe, for the Bills in 2023 behind James Cook and Latavius Murray. Who knows if he's going to take over that actual backup role in 2024 if he even stays with the team. Overall, I didn't hate this pick for the Jags, though, with Leonard Fournette. I'm sure they'd rather have Mahomes over Fournette, but it could have been a lot worse. Hopefully, Trevor Lawrence pans out for them over the long term. Number five, though, was a pick that wouldn't pan out great for the team that drafted him. Corey Davis was taken by the Titans and was supposed 
supposed to be a number one receiver that they could count on for many years to come. They needed him to be that guy because the year prior, Rashard Matthews led the receiving core for them. I would be willing to bet that 75% of you guys watching this video right now don't even know who that guy is. Who are you? Now, having drafted Marcus Mariota just two seasons prior, they weren't ready to give up on him yet, so it's understandable not taking Mahomes here. Nonetheless, Corey Davis was just alright during his time with the Titans, but not good enough for a top 5 pick overall in my opinion. Plus, once AJ Brown got to Tennessee, it was pretty clear he was the more talented receiver. After 2020, Davis found himself on the Jets where his career would really start to go downhill. He couldn't stay healthy with them, and after just 22 games over the course of two seasons, Davis decided to retire from football early. Up at number six, the Jets took safety Jamal Adams. They honestly could have taken Mahomes here because the quarterbacks on the roster were Josh McCown and Bryce Petty. Ugh. I mean, I'm sure they regret that decision now, but Jamal Adams actually played very well during his time in New York. He played three total seasons there and made the Pro Bowl in two of them. Following 2019, Adams was traded to the Seahawks, and after his first year in Seattle making the Pro Bowl yet again, I personally think he hasn't been the same player since. Maybe I'm just delusional, but every time I watch a Seahawks game, it feels like when he's on the field, Adams is either just missing tackles or getting burnt over the top. Pair that with the fact that he's missed a ton of games due to injuries recently, I would say his career has been trending in the wrong direction. Moving on to number seven, wide receiver Mike Williams was drafted by the Chargers. Now the Chargers at the time already had Phillip Rivers, who was a seasoned veteran at quarterback. You can't really blame them for holding on to him after all he'd done for that team. This also paid off for LA in the short term because Rivers made the Pro Bowl during the 2017 and 2018 seasons while leading them to positive records both seasons. As for Williams though, so far throughout his career, he has shown glimpses of greatness here and there, notching two 1,000 yard seasons so far, that he can be a solid deep threat for Justin Herbert currently. My only problem right now with Williams is that his injuries have been taking a huge toll on him for the past couple of years now. I just hope he can stay healthy enough to have a lengthy career. Number eight doesn't even really require a discussion on whether they should have taken Mahomes or not. The Panthers took Christian McCaffrey and they made the correct choice here. Safe to say that CMC saved this team from being absolutely unbearable most of his years with the team. This is the best running back of the league every single year that he's healthy, and it was long overdue that he switched teams and got off the Panthers onto the 49ers where he hopes to get himself a Super Bowl ring in 2024 if they can take down the Kansas City Chiefs. Number nine here was a debatable choice looking back on things. The Bengals went with wide receiver John Ross, who was the fastest player ever according to his 40-yard dash time of 4.22 seconds. They did need a wide receiver, however, because they just lost Mohamed Sanu and Marvin Jones Jr., but Ross ultimately didn't work out in the league due to a couple of different factors. Number one is that he got off to a terrible start to his career, fumbling on his only carry in his first season. After that was number two, and the biggest reason that he failed, it was because he was injured a ton. It was too little too late by 2020 when the Bengals drafted T. Higgins, who has turned out to be a much better wide receiver than Ross. Ross then found himself on the Giants to finish out his career, where he caught just 11 passes in 10 games for a little over 200 yards. Currently, of course, Joe Burrow looks like that franchise quarterback that the Bengals have needed for some time now. They just have to get him back and healthy for next season. All right, now that we've covered all nine picks before Mahomes, like I said earlier, I want to figure out what happened to the other quarterbacks in this draft, starting with pick number 12, Deshaun Watson, taken by Houston. I mean, I think it's pretty clear what he's known for at this point in time, the old happy ending massage treatment, except, you know, the people giving the massage weren't necessarily interested, if that makes any sense. You guys know what I mean. Anyways. On the field, Watson was great for the Texans. I mean, I would go as far to say that he was one of the best in the league during his time with the team, making the Pro Bowl three out of four seasons with the team and then exploding in 2020. Led the league in passing yards, yards per pass completion, and yards per pass attempt that year. After the whole massage therapist thing was over and done with, he landed himself in Cleveland, where so far he just really hasn't looked like the same player to me. Maybe he can come back next season and prove himself, but as of right now, you know, he's nothing more than a mid-tier quarterback in my eyes. I know he hasn't been fully healthy, but even when he's been healthy, nothing too amazing. Next quarterback taken was all the way in round two at pick number 52. Ironically, the Browns took one, Deshaun Kaiser. What a disaster this was. He started all of 2017 and went, ready for this, 0-15 and 15 
with 11 touchdowns and 22 interceptions total. After that, he ended up as Aaron Rodgers' backup in Green Bay and never started another game in the NFL. He's out of the league after the 2018 season. QB5 in this draft was Davis Webb, drafted by the Giants. Webb didn't play in a single game until 2021 where he made his debut on the Bills just to take two kneels. Other than that, he started in one game for the Giants in the 2022-23 to season and threw for 168 yards one rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown against the Eagles in week 18. QB6 was CJ Beathard, taken by the 49ers at pick 104 in the third round. Beathard actually started here and there because of those consistent injuries that Jimmy G was going through during his time with the Niners, but couldn't turn the tide enough in his favor for the Niners to give him that starting role permanently because his record as a starter was 2-10. and 10. Pretty bad. Since 2020, he has been a backup on the Jaguars just in case anything happens to Trevor Lawrence. He went 1-0 this season, though, so things might be looking up for the guy. You never know. QB7 was none other than Joshua Dobbs, taken by Pittsburgh at pick 135 in the fourth round. Now, Dobbs didn't get too many notable starts until this recent 2023 season where he was basically everybody's Superman, America's Superman, for two games. In Minnesota and then he fell off unbelievably hard got benched by Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall right after that but did have a short little insanity run if we just ignore the fall off you know it, it's all great it's all fine and dandy hopefully he comes back and performs well in 2024 QB8 was Nathan Peterman taken by the Bills at pick 171 in the fifth round so far in his career, Peterman has spent time with not only the Bills, but also the Raiders and currently the Bears. He has a 1-4 record as a starter when given the chance up to this point, so also not very good. QB9 was Brad Kaya, who never got any action in the NFL after being drafted 215th overall by the Lions. And last but not least, QB10 Chad Kelly. Taken at pick number 253 by Denver, he got into one NFL game took one kneel, finish off his career with negative one rushing yards. Funny thing about Chad Kelly is he was actually a Mia Khalifa super fan for a little while. Tried sliding in her DMs. That didn't go to plan. And then he got kicked out of the NFL for trespassing after a Von Miller Halloween party. I don't know what was going on there, but it was not good for Chad Kelly. Guys, I think it's pretty safe to say that none of these quarterbacks in this draft class, even compared to Mahomes, there were a couple picks before him that we went over earlier in the video that was, it was respectable decisions. What do you guys think in the comments section? Who would you rather have your team built around? CMC when he was a rookie or Patrick Mahomes? Also guys, if you found this one interesting, make sure to check out this video right here about the 2000 NFL draft. I think you're going to really enjoy this one as well. Also hit that sub button for more content.